verse 3. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. This is referring to even the environment will suffer from the evil of the people. And look at any dilapidated neighborhood and you'll see what this verse is talking about. Everything suffers. When the people's minds get downgraded, when people start to live any old kind of way, when people get to a point where they just don't care, everything suffers. I had one teacher tell me one time, the problem is not being poor. Being poor and being dirty are not the same thing. Someone could be poor and not have a lot of things, but yet appreciate what they have and take care of what they have. But we have a dirty mentality. People don't care. It used to be a time in Detroit where people sweep their porches and wipe them and sweep the sidewalks and clean the sidewalks and took care of the neighborhood. Now we have neighborhoods where no one cares. That's what I'm talking about. When that spirit gets in people's minds, it goes out. So now the neighborhood is dirty. Street lights go out. Nobody cares. Now it's dark. You have drugs and prostitution. Again, no one cares. No one says anything. People bust out windows. You have abandoned houses, which are not necessarily bad, but people break the windows out. They sell drugs in these houses. So it gets worse and worse and worse. But it all comes from disobedience and not being in the right standing with God and not having a moral code to live by. And as you do this, everything suffers. Well, if you have a dirty neighborhood, of course, you're going to have more vermin and rodents. If you have a dirty neighborhood, you're not going to have the birds sinking and chirping because everything is dirty. Everything is polluted materially and spiritually. So that's what he's talking about in that verse. Verse 4. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priest. And there is a, a controversy with this verse and what it means. Let's look at the first part. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another. Basically what this is saying is don't, don't point fingers at each other. Don't try to blame each other. I mean, yes, there's blame to go around. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, you did this part or you played that part. But it's saying don't spend all your time finger pointing. You have a part to play in this too. If no other part, then you didn't say anything. You didn't try to do anything good about it. Did you clean your porch off? Using our previous example. Did you reach out to a child and help them? Not just, not just your children, but maybe your relatives or even one you don't know. Did you do something to help the old lady across the street? Are these are things that he's talking about. So don't just point fingers at the wrong of society. Look at yourself. And say to yourself, what can I do to make things better? And the second part of the verse is a little tough. For thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Now I looked in different versions of the Bible. And we look at the contemporary English version. That verse says, don't accuse just anyone. Not everyone is at fault. My case is against you, the priest. That's one way to look at that part of the scripture to say that Hosea is talking specifically to the priest. But I don't agree with that, and most don't agree with that either. I tend to agree with a different view. With the, I look at the New Life version. It says, for you, your people are like those who argue with the religious leader. And in, the, in John Wesley's uh, commentary of the Bible, he says that what people were doing was trying to blame the leadership. Saying it's the leader's fault. It's the mayor's fault. It's the... Senator's fault. It's the president's fault. But again, don't keep pointing fingers. You are right. Blame does go on the politicians. Some blame does go on the teachers. Some blame does go on the other professionals in the society. But each of us has a role to play. Again, what did you do to make the change? If your school has bad teachers, okay, some of the blame goes on the teachers. Some of the blame goes on the school system. But did you, the parent, Take time and volunteer at the school. Go up to that school. See what's going on. Did you sit down with your children and help them with their homework? Did you do your part to make the school better? <clears throat> so 
So don't just blame the authority figures. Though some blame does fall on them, but look at yourself and see what did you do to improve the situation. <clears throat> All right. The second outline, spurn the offer. We're going to Hosea chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Verse 1, when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood, and the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth without. So Ephraim here is just again referring to the northern kingdom of Israel, not to a specific person. So he's still talking to northern Israel, saying God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. God wants society to be better. God wants the nation to be lifted up. God wants the blacks to do better. He wants the whites to do better. He wants the Asians to do better. He wants the Europeans to do better. He wants the Arabs to do better. He wants everyone to do better and to be better. But your evil keeps getting in the way. Huh? Your evil keeps getting in the way. God wants to bless you and heal your land. But you're getting in the way. God wants to make your job better. But you keep cussing folks out and getting mad at people and walking out and not doing your part. God wants to bless your family. But you want to argue all the time. You want to be right. Hello. God wants to bless and heal. But you, the flesh, keeps getting in the way. Verse 2. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. Here what it's saying is that God knows what you've done. Amen. God knows what you have done. Some people think they can get away with wrong. They think, well, no one saw me. No one heard me. So it's okay. But God knows everything you've done. And this is a, what God is saying through Hosea. Let these people know. I know what they're doing. They can't fool me. And guess what? God lives in you. You can't fool yourself. So no matter how much you can fool me or fool the next person, you can't fool yourself. Abraham Lincoln said you can fool some of the people some of the time. You can fool some of the people all the time. You can fool all the people some of the time. But you can't fool all the people all the time. So you can't hide. You can't run. One songwriter said, can't nobody hide from God. Oh, glory. Let's go.